We're here to answer your game, gaming, and game night questions. You can send your questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com or head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Ask the Bellhop. Uh, social media works too. We're everywhere. It's Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Now, the best way is for questions to come through the website. That way they get tracked and they go in my inbox. I'm not going to miss them. I'm not going to say no to a question asked anywhere online. Tonight, we've got a question that has been asked multiple times. Mm -hmm. And that it's rather appropriate with so many people looking to scratch the gaming itch by playing online. The first time this came up was through the blog. Sigurd Langstaff, who commented on our first post talking about how much we fell in love with Board Game Arena. Mm -hmm. Sigurd writes, you should do one of these for Yukata and Votaju too. And do a comparison after doing so. Well, Sigurd isn't the only one to ask, actually. Red Meeple Ryan, who often joins us in our chat room, has specifically asked about the differences between Yukata and Board Game Arena. I've also seen similar questions on Twitter and Facebook as they come up. So tonight we're going to do a comparison of three online gaming mm -hmm. websites, Board Game Arena, Yukata.de, and Boitajou. So what these three sites have in common over other online options, because there are more, there are quite a few more options, um, and there's some like Steam-based things, like Tabletop Simulator, for one example, or just Steam-based games where you could just like play Terraforming Mars, for example, is that these are, for one, all sites we can play 100% free. There is absolutely no cost to boot them up and play something. Now, there are some premium features on the sites, but they're free to play at least, or free to use at least in some way. Second, these are all browser-based games, sites and games you don't need to download anything you don't need to install steam plus it works on every possible platform as long as you've got a web browser you can play on these sites whether that's on your playstation your xbox your roku your phone your tablet whatever you'll be able to use all three of these sites so this is why we wanted to focus on these so virtual tabletops is something we may leave for another topic or if we covered it at all but this is just looking at browser based ways to play board games online also note, these are ways to legally play board games online. We are, do not want to encourage anyone to use any third-party sites that aren't actually licensing their games or don't have permission to use them. So we're going to try and look at the pros and cons of each site and highlight why you may want to choose one over the mm -hmm. other. One thing we should note, the three of us have all been playing these sites using, mm -hmm. on PCs using Chrome. PCs are a varying power from older laptops to newer mm -hmm. gaming machines, but we haven't tested compatibility with other browsers. Now, anything based on the Chromium engine, like Chrome, should be similar. And Firefox tends to be feature parity with Chrome these days, so I wouldn't expect anything else. But Safari, for instance, or an older I, um, in Microsoft browser, I couldn't guarantee everything would be exactly the same. So I have tried them on Edge, and all three worked exactly the same on Edge. And I have used them on Chrome on mobile, which I realize is different than PC. So I have I've definitely used Board Game Arena many times on my phone. But I did boot up each of them just to try it, to right. see how it worked. And I booted up on Edge to see if it would fix the problem we were having yesterday with one of the sites we're not talking about. And once I had that up, I figured, why don't I try the other three sites? And I took one turn on each just to see. And the, they, it was seamless. It was the same. Right. Then I went and cried because I booted up Edge. <laughs> <laughs> and didn't download a Chrome immediately? but went No, I didn't. I already had Chrome. So, yes, <laughs> I didn't just use Edge to download Chrome. So first up, we're going to start with Board Game Arena. Uh, the main reason we're doing this, this is one we have the most experience with. Deanna, Sean, and I have been constantly playing games on this for, what, almost two years now? About that, yeah. At least, yeah. We already tried it before, but we got heavy into it two years ago. Um, Eric Franklin, fan of the show, a friend of mine from the old G Plus days, is the one that got me into it. And then it spread as a way for us to play games with Sean, mainly because Sean is not local as well as playing with some other people. We played with patrons, we have played with random strangers, and so on. So Board Game Arena we're starting with just because it's the one that we know the best. So again, one thing to remember, all these sites are free, all of them are browser-based. You just go to boardgamearena, all one word, dot com, and that's pretty much it, and you can start playing games. And to be clear, while I do pay for a premium membership on Board Game Arena, and I do actually have a coffee mug and t-shirt from Board Game Arena, <laughs> I've paid for all of those out of my own money because I support the site. Um, and so we, we can uh, just sort of have that out there as an announcement. They have not in any yeah. way sponsored us or paid for us. I really just support them. Yeah, so this is true of all three sites. We This is not promotional material. This is not sponsored content. We have, we th this is all our thoughts, and any amount, the, the, any premium accounts we have, we paid for ourselves. 
This is not sponsored content. These are our thoughts and our thoughts alone. So that's always true, even if it is sponsored content. But in this case, it's not. All right, so we're going to start off with the pros for Board Game Arena. So one of the most impressive things on Board Game Arena is their number of games. They have 175 games. Now, yes, compared to whatever, uh, 100,000, over 111,000 games that are out there, I had to do the math on that the other day because of someone on Facebook arguing silly things. I'm sure everyone's seen it. The, the There are 400 board games post. But anyway, um, really, like, 175 of some of the best games. Like, it's a, it's a good selection of games. It's a good mix of lighter games, uh, Euro games, party games. Like, they're all there. There's even some social deduction games. Like it's, it's a nice, yep. broad mix. What I don't see a lot of are um, Ameri Amerithrash games. Like, you know, there's no real heavy dice rolling, no, dungeon is... crawling. Nope. Uh, it, it's, it's definitely more the, the German Euro side of things. Yep. But there's nothing, there's nothing especially heavy. I mean, like, no. Roll, Roll for the Galaxy is, is heavy on that uh, you know, Terra, Roll for the Galaxy, Terra Mystica are Terra about Mystica is probably the heaviest, the heaviest I would games think. on that site. Yeah. Uh, one of the benefits is you can create public or private games, so you can play with anyone. Like, you can just set up a table, say, hey, I got room for four, people can join you. Or you can be like, I'm setting up a table for three, and I'm inviting these three people. Yeah. It's a nice touch. Uh, you get tons of access for free. Like, you get to do most of the things on the site. There are some premium games you don't get access to, but we'll get to those with the cons. But one of the pros is they have a super cheap premium membership. Yeah. So twenty five bucks US uh, per year is yeah. their their main membership, and with that you get voice and video chat, which we've never actually even used. Yeah. Uh, well, we're gonna get to that later. Yeah. We're gonna actually break down the subscription model for all three of these sites right. after, just to, so we don't repeat ourselves. Right. So cheap membership. Um, if you know someone with a premium account, so this is an awesome thing, is they can then invite you to all the stuff. Like, if as long as one person in your group has a premium account, they can start any game on the site. So if you could split that 25 bucks if you really wanted to. <laughs> yep. Uh, and also, uh, there's uh, if, if two people want to play from the same place, it needs to be a premium. Yeah, that, that one is a bit of a disadvantage. Yeah. Uh, there are game rules and tutorials and lots of tool tips. If you mouse over stuff, you get tool tips. If you click on stuff, you can get it. The game rules are all linked you know, or, or even just at the bottom of yep. the page if you scroll down. Even includes a lot of player aids and strategy tips. So it's not just the rules. Like if you scroll down on any game, you may not have done this if you use Board Game Arena. There's often like little strategy tips or how the buildings interact or tech trees. A lot of that's fan-created content that didn't come with the original games. I was really impressed by that. Uh, there are also game options right there on the page. If you scroll down, you can uh, click through. And credits and sound options are also right there on that yep. game screen, right where you start. Uh, one thing I do really like on that site is the games look like the games. They're they're not abstract versions. In general, I think every game I played on Board Game Arena looks like the original game. Now, they aren't scans, but they no. do represent very accurately the actual thing that's that's in, in some cases i think they probably got the art from the companies yeah. like they got the yeah. actual board game board art instead of absolutely. or the card art it's, yeah, it's no, definitely absolutely. not scans it's it's great art that looks like the game feels mm -hmm. like the game but doesn't feel like an object with a scan picture yep. pasted onto it agreed uh it does some of the work for you it is not just a virtual tabletop it's not tabletopia it's not just here's the board, you get to do what you want with it, manipulate it, and you have to know how to play the game. Like, knowing how to play the game helps, but it does a lot of the work for you. It's going to move your pieces, you're just going to click on a spot, it's going to deduct your resources, it's going to tally your score, it's going to shuffle the cards, all of that fun stuff. Yeah, the scoring is one of the big things, where yeah. you, you don't need to know how to score the game, or if you always make mistakes, you know, it will handle that for you, there are some games where scoring is just a little weird and you don't gotta, you know, even just things like calculating score for um, Takedo can be tricky. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with all the bonuses that, that, that tally up at the end and it handles all that for you, you know, when you hit the end and when the last person hits the end, all those bonuses add up. It shows them all to you. It's got a really nice uh, mm -hmm. list of all the actions that have been taken and you can click on those actions and replay the game from that point to see yep. what you missed in action. A nice touch is 99% of it's animated. 
so you can kind of like see the pieces move yep. in a way. Like if you get coins, you can usually see them come off the side of the board into your pile kind of thing. Like there, there's a bit more to it. Like when you watch the end game, you can see the various areas are being scored. Like for example, we play Terra Mystica, it'll highlight the different player colors, who's getting like the, the majority bonuses for the, the area control at the very yep. end of the game. Or, or when you're doing the various, um the, the elemental tracks. It'll show like who got what points and the nice bright gold colors. Yep, absolutely. And now one of the other really nice things about how this looks is even though the games are represented by their own their own mm. art, there is a continuity across the site about mm. how it looks. So buttons that aren't necessarily part of the game but but integrated with the playing of the game look similar. You know, your button mm. styles are the same. And, and so even though the games themselves are different and feel like the game, so Takenoko feels like Takenoko, Takedo feels like Takedo, Sushi Go feels like Sushi Go, uh, Teramiska feels like Teramiska, that they also all feel like they belong on this same site. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a, there's a real nice, like, all, all, all the games work the same. They're yeah. not the same game, but you have the same basic system. And same with if you want to find the rules, we're always in the same place. You want to find the reference materials in the same place. You want to chat, it's always in the same spot. You want to add notes, it's always in the same spot. And yes, that sounds like it should be that way, but there's a reason we're mentioning that as a bonus here. Yeah, no, this is, this is they, they, they have uh, spent some time and, and really kind of made the site a cohesive mm -hmm. design. So along with that, uh, what I find intuitive and easy to use, iconography, like everything just kind of makes sense. Like the notepad looks like a notepad, the the look at the rules, like it it, it just, the, the icons they choose make sense. Now there are a lot, there's, there's a lot to learn. There's definitely a learning curve, but what they use works. And again, it carries over from every game. Like now, it, it's going to be the same symbols. Yeah. Now there are some things that, that may not be as obvious at first. Um, for instance, Carcassonne, if you're placing a meeple down, you have to make sure you choose the right meeple before you choose the place. You can't yeah. choose the place and then choose the meeple. Uh, and that can catch you up. But, uh, you know, mm -hmm. again, but you're, you're clicking on a meeple that you want. You're not, it's not, you know, clicking on a box that says meeple or, or something yes, strange. You literally click on it's a meeple. meeple. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, one of the other really nice things about it is they are actively working on the site. Just mm -hmm. within the last week, they have added an entire XP system to the to the website so now you're gaining xps and getting new achievements for the game gamifying the games yeah. <laughs> uh, gamifying the gaming of games uh yes. they're on bga and so that and they're adding new games regularly they have just now i've never experienced this but they've just upgraded this whole arena section and you know sort of competitive play section on the site and they are actively developing it and that's one of the nice things that comes from having that premium content mm -hmm. or that premium of the ability to play, pay premium membership uh, to fund their coding development. Yeah, it's for like even since we joined, there's been a, like there's always a new game at the top of the page that they're play testing. Gener they're generally, trying. once a month, uh, I think is their release, their general release schedule. Yeah. Plus, yeah, there's all kinds of neat like the the achieve, it's the Xbox thing, right? The padding, you you earned an achievement, and I I like those. I always have. I don't know why they're they're addictive. They set that little you know dopamine thing going off. Going, ooh, I played ten games of Terra Mystica. I get a little badge I can display. Yep, cool enough. Yeah. So uh, next up, one of the other one of the things that's now this is actually a positive and a negative. Yeah. Is you don't have to finish your turn when you make your move and then you just move on to the next game. Uh, which is nice. Unfortunately, what also comes with that is you can't undo. Uh, yeah, that, that gets to my biggest con, yeah. which we'll get to in the cons. But yeah, once you do your move, it just jumps to the next move, the next section, the next piece, the next whatever. There, There is no review. There's no, oh, wait, that's not what I wanted to do. Yeah. I personally, I don't know if I consider this a pro. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a hit and miss. Uh, yeah. But again, other, other things uh, on the site, they have tournaments. So there's active, yep. uh, you know, again, active competitive gaming as well as you know what we do which is basically just sort of hobby gaming and and gaming for fun there are competitive tournaments and mm -hmm. with those competitive tournaments and to help you find players better there are elo rankings which yep. is a way of basically scoring how good you are at a game uh for every player and every game every player for every game you can find their elo ranking and when you're starting a game you can limit 
who's allowed to play. So if you're a 200 player, you can say, I don't want any thousand players jumping into my game, stomping all over us because they've figured out, you know, the way to win the game. Oh, that's a great one. It's, it's good for the opposite too, whereas if you are a good player, there are definitely games that reward player experience and games that are more fun when they're played with people that know the game. Puerto Rico is probably the most well-known well known classic game where it it hasn't been solved, but there are, it's like playing, playing blackjack where where you're sitting matters. Well, in Puerto Rico, there are certain actions that people expect you to do if you're all playing well. And players who play at that level get really frustrated when a new player comes in and doesn't follow the, the scripted pattern. Personally, it kind of drives me nuts, but because of ELO rating, I can go in and go, I want to play Puerto Rico, and I want to play with people with the same ELO rating as me and know that we're all going to be on the same page. Right. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a huge benefit when you're setting up those tables. Uh, yeah. And it's a nice little thing to be able to brag about for some people. Huh, yeah. <laughs> now, what to be other... honest, I have no clue what my rating yeah. is on anything. I don't pay any attention to it. Hey, it's but there. Yeah, that's, how we, that's not how we play. We're not on the competitive yeah. uh, streak. Now, no. the next other thing, if you are a stats person and you do mm. really crave that information, with, without, with the free membership, you get some level of stats about how each game plays. But if you get that premium membership, the detail with which they break down all the games and the yes. have like the, the it's it's really shocking uh for instance one of the last ones i looked at was takaido because i played a lot and it gives you a breakdown of in games you've played people who win generally do this and you've done this you know this landed on this this many times and this percentage and just the amount of depth to be able to analyze your gameplay that is available on that website is really staggering yeah, plus, this is another one that if you are a game publisher or designer, you can look at these stats for everyone who's played the game. So if you want to see if there's a strategy that everyone seems to prefer or a card people use more often than others, or if there's even just what player colors are picked as trash. So you can actually find out these trends. Uh, personally, I think it's an invaluable thing if you're a publisher or designer to look at, not necessarily for your own games even, but to look at other people's games or other games with similar themes than yours, just to see the biases that people have. Absolutely. And you can also see things like, you know, what, uh, which options people are setting, because when you're setting mm -hmm. up a game, you can use different expansions if they're available and yes. whatnot. Um, and so, yeah, that's something that when you set up a game, it is extremely easy to remove or add in expansions. And most of the games on there have the published expansions that are out. Not necessarily 100% up to date, but at least if it's come out in the last five years, it's probably on there. And they're even working on more things. Uh, just recently, they announced that they added the map for Fire and Ice on uh, Terraform, or not Terraform, Terra Mystica. Uh, Terra Mystica. <laughs> now, but they haven't add, been able to add the full expansion yet, because it just takes, again, development time and effort to put all that content in there yep. and update the game. But that being said, if you are a game developer, they do have a system for putting games in and you can work, work with them to get your game put in. Uh, and then our, our last little one, again, we mentioned this uh, before, is uh, it's totally legal. Uh, so the games are all legitimate and you don't have to worry about whether or not you're really okay to be playing all these games online for free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you are, because they have the permission of the designers and developers yep. for the games. Which is excellent, which is one of, one of, you don't have to feel guilty playing these games. So some cons. Um, there is a subscriber system. It is not 100% free. You don't get access to all the things for free. Yeah, and again, if one person is a subscriber, you do get access to pretty much all the system, yeah. all, all the games for, for free, as long as that one person has paid. Uh, yeah. You don't need to be a subscriber yourself. So. Correct. The one that did hurt us is because Deanna and I live together. If you are not a subscriber, you can't have two people from the same IP play in the same game. So that was a big disadvantage for us. Now, again, subscriptions are cheap. As long as one of us has a subscription, we're fine, and, I th and we can do it. But if neither of us had a subscription, we wouldn't be able to play together. Deanna and I just couldn't play without, well, we could spoof our IPs or something. But generally, we couldn't play. And now this is a protection that the site has put in to prevent people from playing themselves mm -hmm. and upping their ranking. Again, because there are competitive games there, there is the ability for people to try and cheat. And this is yep. an anti-cheating mechanism that's been put in place. 
it's fair. I just it's yeah. frustrating in a way. It is frustrating, um, and it does it does announce though. So, so if you are joining a game where people are playing from the same IP, it tells everyone involved that there yeah. is someone playing from the same, you know, two people playing from the same IP, so that you are aware that you know it could there's be. a potential we're cheating or yeah. something. Yes, um, you can't play all the games without subbing. I did find this frustrating. I will admit because some of the best games, of course, are behind the paywall. But there are tons of great free ones. But again, same thing we've mentioned many times. Just make friends with someone who has a sub and get them to start the game for you. Yep. Now, one of the other problems that has just come up recently because of the current pandemic is you can't actually get in or you yes. have to wait for things. Uh, before the uh, COVID-19 epidemic, they had an average of about 5,000 people online at their peak time. Last time I heard, they were up to 25,000 people on at yes. peak times. And subscribers get first chance in. Yeah. So if you're not a subscriber, there may be a waiting time or even an inability to do something at certain times when, uh, when it's all tied up. Yeah. Now, they are doing a great job of upping this. Like when they first started, when, when everything hit and their numbers spiked, they, they had a hard time. It, yeah. The site was not doing well. But we were literally watching it go up by the thousands of live users. Yeah. Like, you could watch it. We'd be playing it like, oh, another hour's gone by. Look, they, they're now allowing another 500 people in. Like, they must have really scrambled and did some impressive work to get up to the 25,000 they're up to now. Yeah, the, and it's the, probably higher. Yeah, the fact, the fact that, they've, that they've been able to scale as fast as they did yeah. really says some wonders about their, their dev team and their IT uh, department yeah. and, and what they've been able to do and their servers, their hosting. So earlier we mentioned the interface is pretty solid, that it's the same through all games, but it's definitely not the best. There Things aren't always intuitive. Uh, Sean pointed out the Carcassonne thing earlier. I know how many times I wanted to play my big meeple and I played a normal-sized meeple because I clicked on the wrong thing. Yeah. I know I've clicked on something when I meant to scroll the screen. There, It's not always intuitive how to do what you want to do in the games. Yeah, uh, and every once in a while, while we talked about the uh, the consistency of things, Sometimes that's actually a problem. There'll be times when there are two white buttons with blue text, and yeah. one of them is pass, and one of them is play these cards. Uh, in yes. Haggis is my... Is, <laughs> and, okay. and there is a time when you, you click on the cards you want, and you slide your mouse up and just quickly hit, and you hit pass instead of play yeah. these cards. And as we said, there is no finished that's turn. Yeah. So you've done it, and there is no going back. Sorry. You played the wrong thing. Uh, that, that is my biggest complaint about Board Game Arena, that there is no undo. Now, there are exceptions. There are a couple games that have it. For example, Through the Ages has it, but that's actually a rule in the game, that when you're playing the physical board game, you're allowed to get to the end of your turn and go, you know what, that didn't work. Let's back everything up and try again. So I think it's only in there because it's part of the actual game. You, in general, cannot undo, and I don't know how many times I have come close to throwing my PC out the window because I clicked on the wrong thing, I hit the wrong next, I I spent too much of my power in Terra Mystica when I shouldn't have. Like yeah. uh, Race for the Galaxy at the beginning of the game. Here's one that drives me nuts, talking about interface. All the way through the game, you click on a card to dis to play it. At the beginning of Race for the Galaxy, you click on which ones you want to discard. And I don't know how many damn times yeah. I have discarded the cards I wanted to keep at the beginning. And then I'm like, oh, I don't even want to play. I yeah. I, oh, I, you know what, so you, we just started a new game of, of, uh, of Race for the Galaxy, and it took me so much longer to pick the cards I wanted, because I, every time I clicked on something, I had to check and reread and make yes. sure that I was choosing the one I wanted, you know, the, the right one, I, that yes. I was choosing the ones I wanted to discard and not the ones I accidentally wanted to keep, because I've done the same thing. It, yeah. in, in that particular instance... It's a weird it, mechanic it, that they've chosen to go with. It is the opposite with. of the rest of the game. Yeah. Every other time, you're clicking on what you want, not what you want to get rid of. Yeah. Uh, but uh, other, that being said, the consistency generally is, again, fantastic. Now, yeah. one thing we've run into is when you're starting a new game, it, hasn't always, it doesn't always feel like you're doing the right steps. Like you need to, even if you're starting a private game, you need to set all the people up and then yes. open the game to the public which it doesn't actually do, but it feels wrong hitting that button. And so that's that's been sort of a, a weird quirk that we've noticed. And, and sometimes we've ended up starting 
games wrong and having to kill them and start over again. Yeah, there's some weird things when you set up a table too. You have to wait for everyone to show up and be online and accept. Yeah. And if you don't, you close the window. It doesn't create the table. Or if you hit start the game before everyone's accepted, it starts it without everyone there. There, there is some funkiness in yeah. setting it up. Yeah. Now, but another con we've mentioned uh, pretty much every time we talked about Board Game Arena is this is not a good platform for learning games. So, yes, the rules are there. But there's no tutorials. There's nothing that walks you through where to click, how to play, how the buttons work. Actually, there's anything for the entire site even. There's not even like a walkthrough that shows you how to set up your first game. That would be very useful if there was. Uh, there probably is a document somewhere you could read. But like there's no nice tutorial. Like click here, then do this. And like the first time you beat up Terra Mystica, if you've never played Terra Mystica, you're going to be looking at the board going, I don't know what to do. And interestingly enough, the way that game works is you click on what you want to interact with Instead of, here's a list of the eight actions that are possible, and pick one. So that's it's it's not necessarily intuitive. Whereas if you played the game before, you're like, oh, I want to build a house there. So when I click there, it obviously is going to terraform and build a house there. So there is definitely a learning curve to every game. And I've had the problem where I, I've even played the board game before, and sometimes it's the idiosyncrasies of figuring out how the interface works. Like, yeah. I know I can do this in this game. How do I do it? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. There's... Again, because every game is implemented uh, within that the constraints of their system. Again, we've said it before, they all look similar. Like They all look like they belong there. And yeah. in order to do that, some choices have to be made in the development of the game. Uh, and so those choices do feel a little strange to someone who's played the game regularly, maybe. Whereas if you do learn the game on Board Game Arena, somehow... And again, yep. learning learning games there is hard. I've said it myself many times. Uh, if you do learn the game there, you may not be as well off playing the game in person it's as true. a regular because things don't behave the same way. They aren't laid out the same way as they are on board yeah. game. All right. I think that's probably enough about board game arena. So some of the stuff we said here is probably going to apply to all of the sites we're going to talk about. So we're probably not going to repeat the ones that are just the, the same type of thing. Like we said, we mentioned already before, they're all legal. For example, they're all browser-based. They're all basically free. So next, we're going to move over to Boitajou. Boitajou is obviously a French site. Um, that is a, both a pro and a con. If you speak French, it's a pro. It can be a con if you speak English, but only if you really dive into the forums. Or if you really like chatting while you're playing your game. Because that is a feature of all the sites we talked about as far as I know. Actually, I'm not sure on the last one. There is online chat available while you play the games. Yeah. So the best thing about Boitajou, of course, is it's free. Just like the other ones. Um, games are not limited by premium status. Oh, I found out after the fact that it was. Because I didn't realize when we were playing, we were gifted free premium. Yeah, From what I can tell, premium does not give you access to any more games. So... Whether you have a free account or a premium account, you get access to all 61 games. Yep. So it's it's an interesting one. Uh, the, the premium status, uh, honestly, I don't think I would play on Boitajou without premium status. Yeah. Um, it, now, it, again, we're going to dive into exactly what you get for the premium yeah, later. So it's it's interesting. But again, yeah. not everything is free. There is Not that, everyone uh, is. Yeah. yeah. But you can play all the games for free. Every game has its own forum which is kind of, you can tell that you can tell the site's based on board game geek. Like it yeah. just kind of, it, it, it has board game geek roots. So every game you can join in a forum and there's people having discussions and rule debates and everything else. Though I did notice those forums are mostly in French. So pro or con yeah. either way, most people I notice do post in both languages, which is nice of them. And the other nice thing is if you're working in Chrome, it's really easy to translate yeah. to your language of choice. Uh, you know, highlight and right click, and you can translate. <laughs> uh, now, one thing you'll know will notice about uh, Boitajou, and it's Boitajou.net. Uh, yes, uh, we haven't mentioned that before, but uh, the game list is quite different than what yeah. you see on Ooh. BGA, which is a which is a definitely a bonus. You know, having that variety between multiple sites is yes. nice. If they were all the same games on BGA, this would be easy. We'd just say, okay, we like this one better, so. We're yeah. <laughs> That, that, that is part of what, we, what our final thoughts we'll get to. What there are a lot of, which I thought was interesting, is if you like the GIF series of games, which is a series of abstract games, can be played separately or all combined into a massive game. They have, like, all of them. That seems really popular for abstract games. There are games that are overlapped, overlapping, um, but a lot of very different games. Like, the 61 games they chose are very unique 
blend of games. And much heavier games. There, there are a lot more heavier options there, I noticed, than in the others. Yep. So one of the things you could do here is create public or private games. As a pro, that's great. I can do both. As a con, you can only do that if you're premium status. Right. And, uh, you know, in starting games, they, they uh, are very community forum driven. One thing you'll notice uh, is it's interesting. While the site is, again, BGG uh, oriented, it's, it's based off of, they were very inspired by. Yeah. When you click the forums, even though it may, it seems like everything would look the same because they are That's based cool. off of a forum site, it's a bit of a shock because all of a sudden you're in PHP BB. So yeah. the, the, the a completely separate site, essentially, uh, that is a forum, you know, bulletin mm. board site. Um, yeah, and it looks like like if anyone was on my old Windsor Gaming Resource forums, that's what it looks like. You're yeah. on your your pro boards, right? Your free yeah. forums. Absolutely. Now you, the login is the same. You don't have to re-log in. They mm -hmm. they've linked that very nicely. They've done the integration well, but it is a bit of a shock to go from what is Boitajou to the Boitajou forums, which are just clearly yeah. a different site. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it is almost disorienting. Yep. And again, the, the the forums are crazy. There is like a forum for every game, and they're active and they're busy. It's almost like a second board game heap yeah. for those sixty one games. And uh, my my assumption is probably for the French fan base, that's where they go and talk about their games instead of board game geek. More than likely. Uh, so when you create an account, you get to try the premium status. And they don't tell you this; they don't warn you. So I didn't even realize at first that we were on it. But you get ten days premium free when you join. So. It's kind of misleading because it's a bit of a bait and switch because if you don't realize you have it 10 days later you're gonna be like wait a minute why can't i invite friends yep and now one of the some of the i think we're gonna sort of shift into cons a little bit here uh with that subscription you actually get some interesting things that are nice but to not have them when you don't have the subscription yes. is kind of horrifying uh so in, for instance you cannot control what email they send you if you aren't a premium member and the default is every turn in a game, every game start, every game end, all come to you. Uh, and then, yeah, friends are another thing, whereas you cannot have a friends list yeah. if you don't pay for it. And um, you can't just have tables with your friends. So I can't set up a game with Deanna and Sean, and we can't play together on Potaju without premium. Yeah. Uh, and, and then as well, you can't customize the website, which is a pretty big deal because the website isn't really all that great. Uh, now, when I say customization, this is a lot like the old board game geek of customization. So you can shift things around, move them, and reorganize the site to fit what your needs are. You don't have to see this chat if it's not applicable to you. Uh, so another con that I found was... The only way to read the rules was to go to an outside link, basically. Like, some of them were hosted on Potaju, but they weren't there while you were playing a game. There was no way to have the game up and look at the rules. You couldn't scroll to the bottom. You couldn't open a window. Well, you could open another window. But, like, you couldn't... It, it, there was no pop-ups. There was absolutely no coaching rules in the interface. It was, bang, here's your game. Yeah. And that's I, it. When you actually look at the games list on Potaju, it gives you a picture of what the layout looks like. Uh, and we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, the, a link to the rules, wherever they may be. Uh, a ra the rankings, you can check out the rankings. Yeah. The official website, and then it, it links you to Board Game Geek. Right there. Yeah. It's like, if you want to know about this game, go over to this other website and find out there. Um, yeah. Which is an interesting choice. Then, as Sean kind of alluded to there, the quality of the games are, like, so diametrically different. Like, some look absolutely horrible. We played a two-player abstract game that should look great online because it should be so simple to design it to look good online because right. it's an abstract that it has rings and circles and a board with dots on it. Like, that's all it needs. And it looked terrible. And every time you clicked, it had to reload the page. And then when it reloads the page, like, there was no animation. You had to try to figure out what your opponent just did. It was horrible. It, and it, at that point... It, it felt a lot like a high school html yes class like a lesson yep. um you know it, it and it's again it's really simple it's it's lines and circles and yeah they 
it, and at that point, I was almost ready to give up on Bois just after trying that one game. I'm like, wow, like this this doesn't even compare. But then I'm like, Sean, you know what? Pick another game. Let's play something else. He's like, you know what? Dungeon Lords. Let's play a cool theme. So he brings up Dungeon Lords, and I'm like, oh my god, it looks just like the board game. Yeah. It looks fantastic. Like there's the different boards. It's laid out better than I could do it on my own table. The interface is actually excellent with lots of prompts. Like, hey, do you want to do this or this? Oh, do you want to do this? Oh, we're going to do this now. Yeah. Like it walks, it almost walks you through how to play. And there were, warning, well. there were warnings if you were if you were about to make a drastic mistake. Yeah. It popped up and said, "Are you sure you want to click this button without having chosen something else?" Yeah. Uh, you know, it helped you. It was great. Yeah, but it was an excellent day. implementation. It really was. <laughs> it really was, and and that yeah. that kind of reeled us back from our what are we doing on this site feelings. Yes. Yeah. Like that alone, I, like if you like Dungeon Lords, join Boites You just play Dungeon Lords because wow, like great implementation. So a huge range of good to bad on the quality of the games. I, I tried a couple others. I clicked a couple buttons. We'll talk about some specifics when we get into the week in review. And there were good and bad ones, but just the one thing that matters though is unlike Board Game Arena, not every game looked like every game, not every game felt like every game, and not every game controlled like every game. It was like every single one was developed independently. Yeah, it's all it's it's it, it very feels much like I said it was you know a high school project. Maybe it was, and someone just yeah. imported that into what I do. And then you've got some other people who are real developers who have developed something and linked that into what I do. It very feels like a piecemeal, you know, passion project collection yeah. of games. And this is interesting because again, this is another site that has premium membership. It is taking in money, um, yeah. you know, and and it's not a hundred percent clear where the money is going to on <laughs> Yeah. So my it's feelings hard. are the site is very dated. This is the old board game geek. This is not the new board game geek redesign that they've been slowly working through. Mm -hmm. uh, the color schemes and fonts are not well done. Uh, readability is a problem, even for someone who doesn't have visual disabilities. Yeah. Uh, icons are tiny. I would not want to try and play this on a touch surface because some of the things you need to click through just to get into a game are tiny little like mouse pointer mm. sized icons. It's it, it yeah the the lack of unity is a major drawback in my opinion to the experience on Boitage. You're gonna go to Boitage if you like the specific games that are only mm. available. Yeah, it's also worth noting some of the games don't even look like the games. Like, they're not scans of the games. They're not icons from the games. They completely abstract it. One of the games we tried playing, like, yes, I could tell it was that game, but it was so abstracted that, it, 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 like I said, it wasn't the actual board. It wasn't the actual colors. It wasn't the actual pieces. And the other one that's important to note is twice while playing, I've had it literally just crash on me. Like, the site literally would not load. It started giving me, we are having technical difficulties. So I don't know. Maybe. I just happened to get there when they were doing a patch or something, but the fact that it crashed at all is something I've never actually even seen on Board Game Arena. I may not be able to get in because it's too busy, yeah. but I've never seen it just literally shut down. Yeah, I mean, I, now I, I will say the opposite. Again, I play on Board Game Arena a lot more often, uh, and I have seen problems, but when you have a problem on Board Game Arena, the admins jump into a global chat, warn everybody that something is happening, apologize for it, and often uh, take away penalties. We're offline for something we oh. have stopped. Okay. I'm not seeing any problems. <sighs> I don't know. I, I got nothing. All right. Um, um, but yeah, so I, again, it's uh, BGA it may have problems, but the admins are right there telling people about it. Yeah, which is great. All right, just going to pause just for a couple seconds before we get into Yukata. So overall thoughts on Boitajou, not nearly as impressive, but it's got some games you won't find anywhere else. I will say that registering, signing up for an account was dead simple. I didn't have to give them anything except an email address. So if you're worried about people getting that, just make a Gmail account and, you know, or a Hotmail, whatever you use for making spam accounts. I assume everyone else does that. I do that. I have a Hotmail account specifically for registering for sites. I don't want sending, I don't knowing my main email address. Um, we were, there wasn't, you didn't even have to verify your email, which was surprising. Like you literally, you signed up and you could log in right then. Yeah. 
Um, it, it's ugly. It's really ugly. And some of the games are ugly. But then we played Dungeon Lords, and it looked great. So I wouldn't say amazing. Dungeon Lords, the, the reading the trap cards was very difficult. Yes. I, Again, I couldn't fonts, figure out a way to blow those up. Fonts on this site are very poorly chosen. That's a, a, a theme. That is one unified theme. Yeah. All right. Text saying we look good, so we'll continue on. So that was it for Boite de Joux. Finally, we are going to look at Yukata or Yukata.de. Uh, they have 118 games, so up there. Not quite as many as BGA, but growing. Um, what I like the most about this site really is the fact it's 100% free. It is a passion project. They are not looking for people to sub, but you can donate to their site, which we will get into later what you get for donating because there are a couple little perks for doing that, but nothing that impacts how you can play, who you can play with, and what you can play. You can play anything you want 100% free. You can even create a guest account and not register and play. So if you do that, you're not going to be able to play with your friends. Uh, you have to play with strangers. But if you don't like signing up for things and don't like giving out your email address, you don't even have to do that on Yukata. That instantly impressed me. The first thing I noticed when I went there, I'm like, wow, there's literally no pay model here. This is great. There's no paywall. Yeah. And the number of games and the type of game, like the number of games is great, but the type of games there is also something different yes. than you find on BGA. So Yeah, what I loved about that is a ton of heavy games. If you are a Stefan Feld fan, you need to be on Yukata. They're not all of his games, but there is a good list of seven or eight Felds on there. There's your your Castles of Burgundy, your um No Trajan was actually on the other site. Uh, what else was there? There was a ton. We played uh we played Carpe Diem. Yep. There's uh speaker stat like there is a significant list of felds yep uh and as well they do have some of the basics you know you've got your carcassonne you've got your can't stop some of the regulars that you'd expect to find on a game site are there as well so you're not left out if you aren't a heavy gamer uh yep. you do have options yeah there was a nice range i personally th this is definitely it's a it's a german site um that it very much favors german games German styles of games. You're going to find your Aaliyah games. You're going to find your Cosmos games, your Ravensburger. Those are the publishers that have chosen to work with Yukata. And again, we noted these are all legal. This is, all they did was ask. They, the, the owner of Yukata went, hey, can I put your game on my site? And they went, yep. Now what they did to do this though, which is interesting, is it's actual scans of the game components. So the games look like the games, but it's definitely not as clear as say Board Game Arena's graphics. Absolutely. And talking about games, uh, games they've just added, for instance, are Transatlantic and Russian Railroads. Uh, you know, so there's games are still being added uh, and, and yep. it's still being developed, even though this is a free passion project. Yes. So I'm hoping they get lots of donations. Now, I did notice, well, Sean pointed it out, that on the sites, there are links to where you can get the games and pay for them, which I'm assuming is probably part of how they get their money. Yep. Uh, like the other side, you can create public or private games. You can play with strangers. Or you can play with just your friends built right in. Same as the other sites, but no paywall to get to that, which is nice. One of the things I like is it does a pop-out. I assume it's a Java window, but you get a pop-out window for your game. Yeah. So it's not just using your full browser window. You get a little pop-up, and I actually found that way nicer. Like It didn't get in the way of me working. It was nice to have open while I was doing other things. Yeah, and it is resizable. So uh, I was playing on my 1080p monitors, and you could expand that to full size. In most cases, the games expanded pretty well to fit that, and uh, you know, use the full monitor, or mm -hmm. you could keep it at its smaller size. Now, some of the stuff's a little small. <laughs> I did. I found it really hard to use. You caught it on my phone. So yeah. Whereas BGA, I find it actually works. Yeah. No. Again, um, because, because of those scans. You're, you know, you're limited. You're limited to the size, and and you can't yeah. resize everything the same way. Now, one of the things I did find odd is the rules are there sometimes. So with Yakata, you have a somewhat similar feel. Like it all feels like you're on Yakata, but not nearly as unified as Board Game Arena. And some games would have these three bars at the top, and would allow you to see a sidebar. And the sidebar would have different types of information, like a notepad. Your chat was there, and sometimes you'd have the rules, and the rules were right there, and it was. Again, scans. It was typed up, but then scans of the examples. And it that was awesome. But then the next game I played didn't have it. So that was a little hit or miss. Yeah, It was nice when it was there. Now, the one interesting thing is if you go to the uh, game pages before you join a game, uh, they have the rules. They've got the create an invitation. They've got the ranking tables. But they also have an embedded 
YouTube video for somebody's yep. teaching game right there on the page. And that's great. Uh, as well as seeing, you know, what games are, you know, if, uh, are there games open right now? You can jump yes. into the games right there. So if you're looking to jump into a game of, uh, you know, what an era of inventions, you can mm-hmm. jump in right there by clicking on the game, learning about it, and then hopping in. Now, setting up a game I actually found easier on here than Board Game Arena, though we'll get to a con of not knowing if you've been invited later. But yeah. setting up the game, as a person setting up a game, was dead simple and very easy to do. Lots of simple options. Actually, I said more intuitive than Board Game Arena. Yep, no, absolutely. Uh, and when you're about to do something that you're, you're going to regret, you get a warning. So yes. we, even though even though there are some things that can't be undone, you get that heads up that you're about to do something you can't that, that can't be undone. Are you sure? Yes. Yeah, so that's the biggest advantage I find, at least playing Terra Mysticon here in particular, is you have to confirm the end of your turn. You have to be like, I'm done. I've done my thing. And until you do that, you can replay bits of your turn or your entire turn. You can step back one step or you can step back all the way to the beginning of your turn. Unless you basically, something's changed in the game state. So you flip the card, or you've discovered new information, or you flip the tile. But again, as Sean mentioned, it gives you a warning. It's like, hey, you're about to flip tiles. Once you do this, you're not going to be able to hit undo. Are you sure you want to flip tiles? And you're like, yep, I'm good. I'm, and then I see my new tiles, and I'm like, oh, I got terrible tiles. You're stuck with them at that point. It's yeah. actually extremely well done. Uh, one of the nice little things is you can actually set every game. You can set a status on whether or not you like it, you don't like it, you love it a lot, it's your favorite. You can pick through yep. uh, and, and set for your games so that people know what games you like. There's a, a bit of an area for personal information that you it's voluntary to add in, whether or not you want to have some of that information there, mm-hmm. uh, and set what information they send you, whether or not they're sending you emails yep. on games, on invitations, or not. And there's even a wonderful little box that says, I am a hermit and it will basically (laughs) just turn off all the communication. And unless you go to the site and interact with it, it leaves you alone. Yeah. Everything's very nice. And the other thing too, is when you set your favorite games, you can of course sort by that. So you can actually go, which of my favorite games have open tables right now, which was a great choice. Here's one I liked Um, in board game arena. It's a paid thing where you can set your own player color. What I liked in this is you can set everyone's player color. And you could change it. What I see would be completely different than what Sean saw, which actually doesn't matter. Like, in my head, I'm playing yellow, and Sean sees me playing green. Who cares? Which I hadn't really thought of before, but I thought it was really neat for online because I always play yellow, and Deanna always plays green. So when we were playing a game together, I set me to yellow and her to green. That way I just know, looking at the board, who's who. And I thought that was a really neat touch, like something I'd like to see in some of the other sites. Absolutely. That's a fantastic way. Like, on, on Board Game Arena, if you subscribe you can choose your preference. Your color. So yeah. if if you prefer to play yellow or green or blue or whatever, you set that as your primary and then you set a secondary because if two people join and they're both their primaries are the same, it has yeah. to make a choice and it will do that for you. Whereas in this case, if Mo wants to play green and D wants to play green, you can both you play can. green and set some set the other person to another color yeah. on your screen. Yeah, which is I thought great. that was fantastic. I yeah. really like that actually. Uh, tons of stats and rankings. Uh, I don't think there's nearly as much as Board Game Arena, but there is a lot. I admit I didn't deep dive them, but there was a lot of statistics here. Again, free, though. Yep. Whereas the Board Game Arena, to get a lot of the stats, you got to pay. Here, they're just there. Yep, everything everything is right there. Um, and again, one of, the, one of the nice little touches that you get for free on Board Game Arena that we didn't mention is you can set up a profile icon of, you mm-hmm. know, a for you. Whereas on Yukata... You're limited to, uh, if you happen to have your email address associated with Gravatar, um, for people who remember that old uh, Uh, strange, it's a a way to sign into a bunch of things. Uh, (laughs) It would connect, so you're probably connected with Gravatar somewhere. I must be. Whereas I'm not, so I get one of four or five strange little boxy things, and and that's what I'm stuck with. So uh, That's weird. I'm I'm surprised you can't change that. I don't know, mine showed up, and I'm like, sure, I'll use that. Yeah. All right, some cons. Uh, one of the things is it, it's mostly heavy Euro games. Now, someone did mention in the chat, yes, there's, hey, that's, your, that's my fish, which, man, with good players, that's actually quite the strategic game. Uh, this is the heavy game site. This is your longer Euro games, your Felds, your Alia games, your big box games. That can be a disadvantage for some people or a pro for others. Yeah. So 
There's actually an interesting one I didn't even notice before. They actually have a create random game. Okay. As a function. So you can just yeah. create a random play game. A random. You know, whatever you want to play that day from 118 different choices. Hey, if you know that many games, it's a, <laughs> it's a good way to do it. Uh, what we'll see is, again, we talked about this already, is some of the scans of the games are yeah. small. So you run into some uh, discrepancies when you're sizing and you're trying to size. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I found, which frustrated me to no end, whereas you can you can stretch and change the window size in this pop-out game window, yes. you cannot control scroll. So the, the default yeah. scrolling to, to zoom, zoom it doesn't work. Uh, and I found that a really frustrating omission uh, because that's just something that should happen nowadays. I mean, that's <laughs> that's a standard feature. Yeah, and I also found when you resize the window, not every game resize the graphics. Yeah, it depended on the game. So, um, some of the the games had more features than others. Uh, we kind of talked about that a bit. Some would have the rules, some wouldn't. Some would have a chat room, some others wouldn't. Like it just it it was odd. Uh, again, Board Game Arena is so unified. Every game works the same. The chat's in the same spot. The the play by play is in the same spot. Everything's in the same spot. But on here, you'd load one game and it'd be one place. The next game would be another place. And even like where to hit and turn would move each game, and where to hit go to the next table would be in a different spot. It just didn't have that unified theme. Yeah, absolutely. It 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 felt strange and and jumping between two different games. Like we were, we were playing, or uh, we are playing, uh, two or three different games on there, and yeah. each one feels like a different website almost. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Though the quality of the games all felt about the same, as opposed to like Watajou, where the quality was all over the place. Yeah. I, the only thing I found a little weird was some of the graphics on uh, Bruges felt um, yes. odd. But then again, I haven't played that in person, so I don't know how much yeah, of it is. Yeah. For some reason, they they didn't scan the cards. You don't yeah. get to see the fronts of the cards. It's just a really bad font and text, yeah. with, like it, some bad icons. Yeah, it was that was that was questionable. <laughs> um, the overall interface is pretty archaic. Uh, like the 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 site interface, not the like once you play, yeah. it's it's pretty much point and click. But the the overall it, again, it looks very much based on yep. board game. Geek. I think I think a, a big theme was board game geek started, and then these sites went. Oh well, board game geek is great. But we want to play the games. So they took a fam what was at the time a familiar interface and brought that into their world of playing games. And at the time, in you know, 2015, 2010, that's great. But we're a long way past that now. Yeah, even, and even Board Game Geek has moved on and started yes. updating their interface. Whereas Yukata and Botajou haven't really done that. And Board Game Arena used to look like this back in the day. Yep. I do remember trying it out, and they have definitely modernized their look. Yeah. Uh, so now, again, with Yukata, with Yukata, we have to understand that, again, it is a donation, free passion, free, project. Free passion project. So it's a little more understandable. Uh, mm -hmm. BGA, you're pay people are paying for it. They're keeping up with it. Yukata, or Watajou, uh, is the one that's not, a, not free, but also not up to date. So. Yeah, that one's that's an interesting choice. Um, there's some weird oddities I found with Yukata on different games. One of the things is it show how it shows the score. So like we're playing Imhotep and there's two scores, and I can tell one's my current score and one's my end game score. So it's working everything out. But then when the game ended, I didn't win, so that didn't match. Uh, another one that was really weird is we were playing Carpe Diem, and it was adding in the end game scoring stuff in the middle of the game, which is odd like why is it telling me how many points sean has for his chimneys when we that, that's an end game scoring thing and even more so specifically with carpe diem carpe diem specifically says you put your cards in a pile so no one knows what score you have but there it is i can see everyone's score so they're obviously breaking some of the game rules i guess for usability or because they need to display the scores somewhere so it's just wonky right so but then we played something else and it didn't show end game scoring and, and it only showed some of it. Like, even Carpe Diem, it didn't show you our fountains, but it showed the chimney scoring. It, it just, it was weird. It, yeah. And it didn't always make sense. And again, these, the, how these games are developed, we haven't delved into deeply, but it's very clear that it's not all the same person. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's a really weird thing. So two things this came up. Yakata doesn't tell you who won the game until, like, the only way I found out a game was over is I got an email 
Then I finally figured out the like obscure place you had to go two menus deep to get your list of completed games to even see who won. So that's something where Board Game Arena has that problem to a point that you at least get a little notification. Or if you watch the game end, you can see the end of it. Where this was like, it ended. Even though like I have it open and I'm watching it and I don't see the game end. And I just hit next table and I notice that I keep hitting next table and I never go back to that table. And I'm like, oh, that game's over. Oh, that's why yeah. it's not going back there. Yeah, there was the interface in when when it comes to changing games and, and interacting with the games was not consistent. One yeah. of the things I found was even with a game that Mo and I were both actively playing real time, it wouldn't always tell me when it was my turn. Yeah. Sometimes I'd have to click on it or I'd click next next table and it would bring me back to the same table or I'd see that it was my turn and I'd click on something and a pop-up would show saying it's your turn now. And I said, I know that I was trying to play. Why are you yeah. getting in my way? Uh, so that was frustrating. It also has a really weird one. That's not that bad once I figured out what it was doing, but it won't let you take, it makes you take your turns in a certain order. So if I'm playing three games, it wants me to take my turn on game one before my turn on game three. And there is no possible way to take my turn on game three until I take my turn on game one, which I found really annoying. But then I'm like, well, it didn't really matter. Like, I got to take turns on all three games anyway. But it was just kind of like, I just want to take my turn in this game. Why do I have to go finish? Ah, it was just a little frustrating. Yeah. And again, one thing that I love about BGA is the site is interactive with you. So if the window is open, it's updating yes. things for you. Whereas uh, Yukata, if you go to your overview page, and that is, if you once you figure it out, overview is, it's got a live chat, which is updating. So I thought, okay, great. I'll leave my overview open. And when right. it's my turn, it'll have everything will happen. Or if I'm invited to a game, it will update. Well, it turns out that the only thing that's live <laughs> updating on that page the is the chat. And there had been two invites sitting there for a while. And I didn't know. Um, yeah. And I didn't, you know, turns, it was my turn on games. I didn't know because I wasn't refreshing that page. And yeah. that's frustrating. That is just a just a little wonky. And Boitezu, we missed that, actually. Boitezu only refreshes the page if you're premium. Otherwise, you have to keep hitting reload. Oh, I didn't even know that. That's, yeah, that's which yeah. we're going to get to now, actually, because I think at this point, let's take a look at the specific game I want to talk about just for a minute. We played Terra Mystica on both of these. Mm -hmm. So Terra Mystica on Board Game Arena looks like the game. Terra Mystica on Yukata looks like the game. But man, the interfaces are completely different. And what's interesting is I found that Yukata does it by the rule book. So in Terra Mystica, you technically have eight options every turn. And what they do on Yukata is they put all eight options in the top right corner of the board, scanned off the player aid. Whereas BGA instead goes, here's the board. And when you click on the spot you want to do the thing, it extrapolates what action you want to take, which is right. always obvious. It's like, if I click here, I'm going to try to terraform and build. Or if I click on my existing building, I obviously want to upgrade it. Whereas in Yukata, I have to click on upgrade and then click on what building to upgrade. Yeah, no. I To me, there's, it's, there's very different uh, ideas go, that have gone into how to play the game. Uh, I feel like to a new player, Board Game Arena is probably the better option. But if you play Terra Mystica regularly, if you are a Terra Mystica lover, mm. I would say Yukata is the better system. Uh, now, my problem is because I have only played Terra Mystica a few times, I, I've, I've struggled a little bit to make sure I know where everything is and what everything means. Um, but I, th I think as a more familiar player to Terra Mystica, mm -hmm. I would actually end up liking the information display on display, yes. Yukata better. Yeah, it summarizes things a lot better. It uses the, the screen better, better utilizes your screen. And what I love is I can undo. When I go to build that spot and then I get told I don't have any houses left, that drives me nuts in Board Game Arena. Yep. And then I'm like, fine, I won't build. Nope, sorry, you chose build. You gotta build. Even though you don't have houses to build, you yep. wasted your shovel. Screw you. That's what it feels like a Board Game Arena. Yep. Whereas in this game, I go to do it. It's like, oh, you don't have any houses. Okay, never mind. Back up. I'm gonna do something else. That alone is why I prefer Yukata for at least for playing Terra Mystica. That alone, I, I'm never going to misclick. I'm never going to try to scroll my screen and accidentally put a priest on a 
a, a temple. I've done that one on my phone where I'm like, I just want to move this over and it ends up I tap a tree spot yeah. and all of a sudden I go up on the track and I'm like, no, I didn't want to do that. Well, and one of the one of the really nice things about yukata.de is when you've got special moves, when you've got an extra bonus from something, yeah. they're all in the same place. Whereas yeah. on VGA, you need to know where yeah, to look know where... or you're not going to use your extra powers uh -huh. and it won't tell you you haven't used them. You're just out of luck or it'll t or it'll tell you you've when got you a go move pack. available. Yeah, you it'll tell you you've got a move available and then 15 minutes later you find a little box somewhere that you could have that you that you it's waiting yeah. for you to click. Uh whereas on Yukata it's all right there. You've got one player line essentially uh that you can expand, but you don't need to cuz it's all right there in one tiny little line yeah. and if you know what all the iconography is, you're set. So personally, I gotta say I prefer Terra Mystica on Yukata. I think it's it's a better interface. It doesn't look quite as nice. It's not as polished, but I'm finding I'm playing better because I'm I'm realizing what I can do. I can see what you have. I don't have to look over on the right to figure out your things. You know, I don't have to scroll down to see your player board. Everything's yeah, player, just presented. The better. player board summaries are a nice yeah. touch that I find easier to read uh, yeah. and play off of compared to an actual player board, which yeah. is what you get on. Board so I got to admit, when I first started, I'm like, how the hell am I going to track the bowls? And it, no, now that been, I'm used to it. Yeah, it was, I have to say, because I was, I'm still reasonably a newbie at Terra Mystica, it was terrifying starting a game on huh. Yukata. Uh, I was really freaked out by the, the interface because, again, iconography is, is, you know, you have to know what things are. Yeah. Uh, because it's not even obvious that you can click through and, and, and pop open things and expand things. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Dana can. was having that problem. She's like, I'm like, just click here and do this. She's like, oh, you can see your player board. She couldn't figure yeah. out for the first few turns how to even view her player board, which is, to be honest, not as useful as I thought it was. It's just I'm so used to it from the other version. Absolutely. Like for, for me, uh, one of the things that I hadn't noticed when I was choosing my, choosing my uh, uh, player faction, faction um, I kept trying to figure out which one I wanted. And yeah, on the board game arena, for... as soon as you mouse over it, it pops up the power for that faction. Whereas this, I you told me later how to choose that. I kind yeah. of just picked one eventually. Yeah. Um, in a bad way. Because I, yeah. I didn't really have any idea what all the pictures it was splashing at me meant. I couldn't remember yeah. all that iconography. It was sort of like, you know, playing uh, roll in, roll for uh, Race for the Galaxy, Race for the Galaxy with just icons and nothing else. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we took a look at these three sites. We've given you pros and cons for each. Uh, we basically looked at them as free resources, though. You can subscribe to two of them, and there is an option to pay on the third. So I want to take a look at each just so everyone gets all the information to know how much it costs and exactly what you get. So Board Game Arena, I'm going to go with Canadian because that's what came up on my screen. Six bucks a month or $35 a year. And that's rounded up. It's actually like five something and change. It's, it's closer to six. Mm -hmm. 35 bucks a year, I got to say, is pretty dang cheap. Yeah, I mean, I, there aren't too many sites you can get a subscription to for $25 a year. Uh, $25 a year, I think, a year is the U.S. price. U.S., uh, yeah. And you, I don't know sites you can get that. Spend that little, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so the things it gives you, I'll probably just run through these quickly, is access to premium games, and more importantly, the ability to invite anyone, premium or not, to those games. No waiting lists, which is important right now. That, and there's enough reason to subscribe at least for a couple months, I think. Yeah. Uh, you can play from the same IP address, which is invaluable for Deanna and I. Uh, there's voice video chat, voice and video chat, where you can do that while you're playing. To be honest, I haven't even bothered trying that out. I don't need to see my opponents. Uh, you get to pick your player color, something I think is kind of cool. I like to play yellow, or I like to play play white, or I like to play orange. I like those light colors, and the fact I can do it. And then ridiculously in-depth statistics, like over-the-top amount of statistics, insane ones. And the ability to create tournaments, which I don't care. I don't play competitively. I don't plan on playing competitively, but I know that's going to be a feature some people are going to like. Absolutely. Uh, as well, there's also some extra ways that you can get bonuses. Uh, they do have a point system built in. So if you help them out and you translate a game for them into another language, you get points that you can put towards a membership. Oh, that's uh, cool. So you can actually even get free memberships by helping the site out 
in in the, ways that aren't coding, but you know, are a major yeah. bonus to them. That's also very uh, uh, board game arena like, yeah. or, or not board board game geek. geek. Yeah, like I I have paid for subscriptions on there with Geek Cult many times. Right. So Yokata, we said it's one hundred percent free. There is no premium account. There is no paywall. You can play as a guest or register. There's your two options. The benefits of registering is all your basic stuff, right? That's your create your username, your rank, you can have friends and all that stuff. Uh, the main reason, though, is so that you can do that, right? So you, you don't have to always put a stranger. Now, they do offer a donation system, but it does give you something, which is kind of neat, which I don't care, but some people do. But you get flair, and this flair is very much based on Board Game Geek. You get a unique online icon, so next to your name is a gold, silver, bronze, and for some reason, red is the highest. I don't know what red's supposed to be. Next to your name, showing that you're a subscriber or a donator, someone who's donated. And you also get a little bar that says subscriber in the year you subscribed in, and every year you subscribe, that number goes up. If you've seen a subscriber on Board Game Geek, it's, it is directly ripped off from there. Like, I swear it's probably the same code to make it look the same. Like, I'm, I'm surprised they don't offer micro badges under your name, too. It's that close. Now, so a little, little nice touch. So if you give them any money, like anything, you donate a buck, you get one of these little pieces of flair. You can donate way more than that to get more colorful flair and show off. Now I think one, it's a nice touch. Now, one interesting thing I noticed is I got an update message after we joined, uh, and apparently their donation button had actually been broken for a <laughs> year. Wow. Um, so, again, this site, as much as there are some really nice things about Yukata, they are not a well-developed, uh, you know, actively developing sites. I'm pretty sure you caught as one person sitting at a computer quite, who quite has possibly. a day job. Yep, yep, <laughs> right? absolutely. It is a passion project. All right, what does you? This definitely has a premium subscription, and once you see this list, you'll see why. They obviously expect you to do this. This is basically, to me, a paywall to be on the site. It is five euro a month or 35 euro a year, or they do offer a six month for 20 euro. I think I typoed that. It was 20, yeah. Yeah, for 20 euro. Now, I don't know the exchange rate, but from what I understand, that's about double what it costs at Board Game Arena. Uh, right now, 35 euros is $53.75 Canadian. So, yeah, just about, about double. double. Not quite, but close, close to double the price. So subscribers get auto refresh and turn notifications. How is that a subscriber model? That's like, it, yeah. isn't that like like my screen Basic refreshes function. when it's my turn? Come on. Um, I, and, and I gotta admit, like Sean and I both had problems with the screen yeah, didn't refreshing actually, didn't without actually with the stuff. Like it didn't even work. Uh, you can create premium member only games and invite only friends. Yeah, okay, I get it. Personally, that's why I joined these sites. Uh, ability to create non-ranked games with friends. Okay, sure. Ability to limit players based on speed. I thought that was neat. That's one that actually Board Game Arena could probably use. Um, creation creation of parties. Uh, that is something we didn't mention on Board Game Arena. You can make a party of players so that you always play the same games together. I thought that was a nice touch. We've done that with the three of us. I've, I've made a friends list for playing it. Uh, friends and foes. Again, to me, that shouldn't be that should be a basic feature to me. Well, at least the friends part. Yeah. It is interesting that they have foes, so there is a way to block players so you never play with them. If that's a feature on Board Game Arena, I've not seen it. Not that I'm aware of. The ability to manage email notifications is a premium feature. That again is one of those. Shouldn't that yeah. just be basic? Yeah, that's a, that's a huge turnoff for me. I don't want the amount of spam that they are able to generate by default sent to yeah. my email box. Maybe you get no emails if you're not uh, free. No, it's, it, it specifically says you're not allowed to customize the emails we send you. Uh, a bunch of customization options. I'm not going to bother with those, but it's all the profile settings. You can set your age, your preferred speed, all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, private game notes. So you can take notes while you're playing games. How, again, how is that not like a basic creature? Plus, like, why would I pay for that if I could just open Notepad? Like, I found that one a little odd. Yeah. Um, online status of players again, like, I, do I care? Like it's, it's turn-based. Do I care if people are online? Why is that premium? Uh, exclusive forums, which again, we mentioned it. Boite de seems like, uh, a very popular forum as well as a place to play games for, especially in the French language. So uh, it's probably a big deal for people who care. Uh, like, I don't know. I, I look at this stuff and like, to me, these seem like the things that everyone should get, like not all of them, but most. 
Like the, the refresh, like come on, and just be able to add friends and create games with just uh, the three of us. I gotta pay for that, and I gotta pay double what I gotta pay on the other two sites. Yeah, it's interesting. Now, I mean, to be fair, there's probably some informational protection you get from joining a European site. Again, the Euro, Euro uh, GDPR and, and such does have, have some information protection rules that you can uh, that you know benefit people. Uh, but honestly, I can't imagine playing Protégé without the subscription, and yet I don't really want to spend that much for yes. that website. So now, I, to be honest, um, I really like being able to play Dungeon Lords on there. So what I think I'm going to do is once it expires, see how that works. Yeah. But otherwise, yep. So final thoughts. Uh, I think it's pretty obvious. We like Board Game Arena. We both like Board Game Arena a lot. We've been using it for a long time. It's a fantastic site. I personally think it's well worth paying for the premium account, at least for one person in your group, if not all of you. Now, if you have two people in the same household, you don't have much choice. One of you should have to subscribe. But like I said, the, the, the cost for what you get, like the, the, the cost versus benefit analysis there, just makes sense. Like that's, that's a crazy low price for the amount of time you're probably going to spend playing games. The hot seat, you can play real time. There's a really good mix of games on there. I love it. Yeah. Uh, you can actually even, there's, there's things we haven't done yet. Like we can actually create our own uh, forums. Like we can have a tabletop bellhop forum on Board Game Arena yeah. that, you know, that we just haven't played with yet. Um, and again, the, the consistency of interface is a really big thing if you're going to play more than one game. You know, if we, if we just want to play dungeon something, uh, you know, whatever it is, dungeon, um, Lord, dungeon yeah. Lords, then fine. Maybe, maybe that's all the game we care about. And as long as the interface within the game is one thing, that's great. But I'm playing 14 different games on BGA right now. The fact that I know where to look every time I change to a new game is mm. really important. Uh, and you don't get that with the other sites to the same degree. No. Now that said, I like Yukata. I like Yukata more than I thought I was going to like Yukata. Uh, the biggest thing there is, is the variety. Like the, some games are definitely done better than others. Yep. And you're don't give up on your first impression is what I would have to say. <laughs> yeah, try a different game. My, my first impressions weren't great when I first went there, but after trying a couple different games, some of the things on there are worth it. Like just the fact that Yukata has an undo and end turn button is going to make me want to play on there more. I, that is the one feature that I wish Board Game Arena had, is the, the biggest flaw in that game are the, the mixed click. I, I've lost games like because of clicking the wrong thing. Yeah. And it's so frustrating, where you'll never have that on Yukata. And yes, Deanna noted this in the chat. Not every game has an undo, but most of those games you're revealing some kind of new information every turn. Yeah. So that's why, is, is because then you could be like, oh, I didn't like what came up. But every game I enjoyed playing on there, I was able to undo what I needed to undo. And that alone made it worth it. I like the, the the windowed version, though. Yeah, it's it's buggy. It's it's definitely not as clean. It's definitely not as nice as Board Game Arena. But in that case, if a game's on both right now, I would probably lean towards playing it on Yukata over Board Game Arena. Other than that, I'm gonna go to whichever of those two sites has the game I want to play. Yeah. Uh, one of the things uh, about uh, Yukata, what was I about to say? I was about to say something. I completely lost my train of thought. <laughs> That's All why right. we're usually scripted. <laughs> that's, that's why it's, we are not scripted this way. We figured it out. We're rambling a bit, too. Uh, and then the last one is Boite de Jou. Uh, overall, it's got some unique games. I am not overly impressed by the look of the site and the, the, the widely varying quality of the various games. Like, from absolutely horrible, as Sean said, feels like a high school programming project to, wow, this is a fantastic version of a game I have downstairs on the same site. What really turns me off on there is their pay. That they have a paywall, a significant paywall that's pretty much double the cost of the other site, and it's just not as good. You don't get as much for that money. So, I, I if there's a game like if you really want to play the games there, maybe it's worth it for you. If you're French speaking, it looks like there's a fantastic community there. And no, I don't mean that they don't ostracize the English. There's definitely enough English speaking people there. It's not a French site. It is located in France, but like the forums are definitely more. There's a lot more French language there than there is English language. No, absolutely. I mean, it is a it is a French company running a French website. Uh, you know, 
there's there's definitely that's who they're organized towards. Um, but my problem is again, you, you talk about a paywall, and it's if the if I was getting something for that paywall, if mm-hmm. I was getting a a well developed website, I wouldn't mind. I, you know, I pay for board. I would pay more for board game arena because of the consistency mm-hmm. and the 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 modern feel of a website i whereas you go to Botajou and you feel like you're going back 12 years ago and yeah. you know is, is geo city's gonna pop up soon like, it's almost 20 years ago yeah to be honest yeah it does like i'm I'm surprised there's no spinning flag next to my name or a fly, waving canadian flag right like oh it's and i gotta say you got us not much better so now there are other sites out there. there there's, uh, you know what? I'm not going to mention. There are others. These are definitely the big three. This is this is your automotive. And it's your GM, Ford, and Chrysler. These are the big three. Again, browser based free ways to play online. These are the. There's Tabletopia. There's other other sites out there. And I did try a couple things on other ones. Tabletopia won't even run in my browser, so that shows how good that one is. Yeah, we we, so we tried but, Tabletopia and discovered that it is really a sandbox. Uh, more, yeah. Whereas these these are these are game systems, right? They they are doing scoring for you. They are doing work. You're yeah. clicking to where you want to move, but the game is being played. It is not a virtual you. You are tabletop. basically their digital versions of board games. Yes. This whereas is the, Tabletopia is a virtual version of a board game. Yeah. Absolutely. So out of the three, definitely Board Game Arena. Check it out. I I am not like there's things I I would improve, but there's nothing wrong with it. Check out Yukata. Try a couple games. I personally like the interface. I like some of the things it does there. Uh, Boat is you could almost skip. Like, go there and see if your favorite game's there. Yeah. If your favorite game's there, feel free. Have fun. Play Un- it there. Unless there's a game that you can't find anywhere else. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, I can't. Uh, yeah, I can't recommend it. Yeah. All right. And now, now that we're done with our thoughts on the main topic, Head over to the lobby. Uh, there's been a bunch of chat going on there. I see Major Kayla has been trying some of these sites yes. as we cha- <laughs> as we chatted about things. As, as we were talking, she was checking out the various sites, which I think is pretty awesome. I think it's interesting. Deanna definitely prefers Terra Mystica on Board Game Arena. I am definitely like right, uh, quickly. I was preferring it on Yukata, and I think you switched her way through. Yeah, I have to say it's it's. I, I've played today. I have now played turns in both of them on both sites, and. Uh, I, the more familiar I am with the game, the better I like it on Yukata. Mm-hmm. Um, now, the one the one that we didn't really talk about and and is boggling my mind is is Bruges. Um, or uh, I don't know that game at all. I didn't know anything about yeah. that game, and there is nothing on that game helping me. It is. No. I mean, I'm clicking stuff, and I don't know what I've done. <laughs> no, it is not. I am just laying. I hit oh what is that? okay that says a purple dice has to be a four or five well i can't do that because because there are dice and it's a color but when i click on something and it pops up five icons that i need to choose from i have zero idea All what right. any of that means yeah the yukata there's something we didn't mention during the the main topic but i think it's worth mentioning here board game arena has better onboarding in general but it's still not a good place to learn a game Yukata, you have to know how to play before you go there. Like, at least read the rules. And Boatezu was even worse. Boatezu, even if you know how to play, you might have to figure out how to do it on Boatezu. Yeah, I have to say, I I stand by what I said way back in the BGA days. Don't learn a board game online. No. Just don't. It's not the best way to do it's, it. You know what? If you can, if you can sit and watch, um, you know, uh, a watch it play watch it play you know ronald runs through it or somebody somebody's yep. really good visual playing then you can probably jump into one of these but that's the bare minimum you need to go through uh there are very few of these games even on bga which has very accurate reproductions where you can look at a manual like a, a, a instructions and then figure out how to play it on the game uh, there you maybe some people can can do that but i really don't think yeah. so so i found in in yukata the ones where i could bring up the rule book beside it because they would use the same scans yeah i found that easier but not every game had that option yeah. bruges one that doesn't yeah exactly where <laughs> the games that had it i found it great but again it's it's, it's a mixed bag where board game arena is so much more standardized yep. throughout the whole platform yep yep 
So we had some discussion. Uh, Deanna's shocked that they these companies get permissions to put all these games online. Now, you did some research into that about the legality of it. And as far as you could tell, it was just basically they asked permission. Correct? Yeah, no, they, they, they have permission for all of these games. And there are games that get taken down. You know, sometimes the publisher says, oh, we're doing something. And sorry, you can't have this game anymore. And the game goes away which is unfortunate, but I mean, you know, it's like Netflix. Sometimes you're allowed to have the movie, sometimes you yeah, aren't. Yeah, very true. But yeah, it's all literally just the companies going, yeah, sure, you can have it, and you can tell the company has provided resources, and when they have it, right? Yeah. Like, here, have our art. You can tell when they've done that, and when they went, oh, yeah, fine, make a game. Two make years make a game with Yiddish, and then they set it to a yes. 12, grade 12. For, um, so. All right, looking through the chat quickly dungeon lords i don't know how much text because again dungeon lords was definitely scanned those were scanned flare boards and, yeah. and especially the trap cards were badly scanned and hard to read so i don't know how it would work for you ryan i apologize uh the real arch goose mentioned that google is spying all he had to do was put in boi and it auto filled <laughs> yeah i don't know yeah so Deanna's no issue. You can screen. She could zoom on Yukata with pinch and zoom. See, uh, I think I was also able to. So but, you know but, what? But when I, I, but when I did hobby. the control, but when I did the control zoom, uh, zoom within the game window, I wasn't able to for some reason. Because I have a current game I can jump into. Yes, I do. So I have a game with Gizia. I can control scroll of Gizia at shrinking and growing. Interesting. So okay. it maybe it's a specific game. Because that was, I'm trying to remember which uh, game that was. Because is the one game where when I resized the window, it didn't change size. Oh, But I can control scroll and blow that up to be my whole screen. Interesting. Oh, it's even resizing the text and everything. Like, it's it's some of it's vector graphics. Not all of it. <laughs> okay. So, some so so again, another mixed bag, right? Some, yeah, another mixed some bag. Some functionality so it you're going to get, some you're more. not. Now, I swear I did it with control plus. Is it control plus? See, I think one, I couldn't use the scroll wheel, but control plus worked. Oh, okay. All right, now let's jump back over here. What else do we have? Um, there was something else I saw. And I forget. I lost it. No, I'm not sure. There's definitely some idiosyncrasies for learning all the sites, but yeah, I have Board Game Arena first, you caught a second, and Bois de Jules only if only if your your favorite game's there. Yep. And as far as I can tell, it's going to be the same for the other sites. So I did try a couple other sites. Some, I couldn't even figure out how to start a game, so I didn't even want to talk about that site. There are sites out there that there is a site that all you can play on is Brass, and it does a great job of playing Brass, but all you can play on it is Brass. Which, for some people, may be a, you know, yeah. maybe a well, huge Brass, thing. You can also play games on Board Game Arena. I have played, um, what is the name of that game? Tigers and Euphrates on there. And it was completely abstracted. I don't even know if Board Game Arena still has online games. They did at one time. You mean board game geek? Yeah, board game geek. Sorry, <laughs> board game geek. You could you could play games on there before. No, oh, Bruges is a rough one to to try to teach people. I don't know. Are we going to do a watch it played videos? Are we going to start doing Yakata watch it played videos? Do you mean watch it played videos as in we're going to stream a Yakata game? It's possible. It probably worked better for um, sourcing into Streamlabs because it opens in a separate window. Yeah. Oh, teach people how to play. Ha, there you go. Oh. We could do that. How to how to how to play online. That's not a bad idea. If you could see my mouse, yeah. and then you'd have to put features over top. You pro yeah, we probably need permission. How to play Bruges on Yukata. How to play Bruges. They'd probably love it. They yeah. already have, except on Yukata there is a video for every game, but I think it's with the physical game. Yeah, but I think they've just grabbed somebody's embedded somebody's YouTube link. Yeah. All right. I don't see anything else in the lobby, but I do know it's interesting to see a bunch of people in our lobby right now. We got a really full lobby. It's awesome to see a big, nice double digit number in there. Not everyone's chatting, but that's cool. Um, I have been checking it out as we're talking, which is pretty neat. It, I, I've gotten a kick out of seeing like Danielle and going to the different things and complaining about it, <laughs> complaining a bit about the interfaces. Yep. 